Zucks. I am here with an Asa SCD, Sierra Charlie Delta, um, Scandinavian cylinder. It's the first Scandinavian cylinder in my collection and um, one of the picks on my hit list, which I've not yet opened. Um, just to show you the challenge, here's the key for it. I'm not going to pick it in this video. I'm going to take it apart for two reasons. One, I want to see what's going on in there because I just have no love with this thing. And two, it has a really, well, it has a, the way you take it apart is unlike any lock I've ever seen before. So I thought it was pretty brilliant actually. So here is the top of the Bible. Okay, see all the holes. And there's this brass pin that runs the length of it. And in the back, it has a, a slot. It's actually a screw. And this is going to... Oh, I'm out of threads. Okay, so now at this point, I can slide this back and expose the first pin chamber. And the spring doesn't even pop out. So it sets down in there. And so I can go chamber to chamber and pop everybody out without having to hold anything down or spray springs all over the place or any, any, un, any untoward stuff like that. And start with chamber one. So I back that guy out. Maybe I need to back that a little more. There we go. That was easy peasy. Look at that. If I go this way. There we go, look at that, it even comes out in the right order. Somebody was actually thinking when they designed this thing. They said, I'm really sick of taking locks apart the way that you usually do. Good lord, look how long that pin is. It sounds a little obscene, but that is a very, very deep cut on that guy. We saw that on the key. There's four. Over there, there's the little plate. It even has little indexes to get it lined up so the screws will go in nicely. And just look at the tolerance on that. the tolerance on that. Now, one, the first thing I'm noting is that the plug, or the, uh, the shell, has a milling for a sidebar. This lock does not have a sidebar, it's just a pin tumbler lock, but apparently they use the same, um, the same milling for some of their other fancier locks. So this is the plug. There's this drill pin here. The drill pin there, which doesn't seem like it is really necessary in this particular lock, but there's also a little hole there, um, which might be for like a, um, uh, what's it called? Either where you can change the key or for a construction keying type of deal. Um, these chambers are they are counter milled. Let's see if we can zoom all the way in. I think you can just see on the lip of these, and um, LSA was nice enough to point out my mistake about counter milling before. There's actually two or three concentric rings there milled in, like almost like threaded in there. So that's going to catch on those serrated drivers and make life, and they're very light, they're very light milling, so it's going to make life very difficult. Another drill pin there. So we've got drill pin, drill pin for something that doesn't exist, drill pin. Um, another drill pin on this side. So it's quite possible that they use this plug for several of their locks. We have a serrated pin, serrated 
top pin. I'm trying to decide if that could count as a spool, but I don't think so. That I'll call a spool. That I'll call a spool. And that I might call a spool. I'm not sure if I call these spools or serrated. But you can see how thin the lips are. They're just going to stick right down in those, um, those little threads in the or little rings in the uh, pin chamber and that's going to give you a lot of very false feedback. And I'm going to stick the key in and I'm interested in pin 3. Now, here's pin 3 and you'll see why I'm interested in him. See how long he is? That's the key pin. One, two, three. You can see he sits flush there. Now what I want to see, is I notice that, look how far up that goes when you pull the key out. So that's how far down he sits. Can we see that? Let's, two, let's just tilt this like that. You see how far down he is? He is, I mean, he's like right at those serrations. I don't know how deep that is, but not very deep. But let's take my, let's just take a hook and just run it in. So to get below him, okay, I can get around him. But now if I want to come up and set the next pin, I'm all over him. So I don't know, maybe I can come from the very bottom and get in, but it's not looking promising. This could make it, this could be part of my problem. <laughs> um, here's a much deeper hook. It's also thinner, so maybe I can get further down in the keyway. So that's three and I don't know. Let's put four in. Four is a very, very shallow cut. We were looking at pin three, just this cut here. I'm going to guess that's a max depth. I can't imagine it could be a whole lot deeper. And there's pin four, which is like a zero. So I've got to find a pick that can get through all this warding, get underneath there, and then come all the way up to there without hitting, without oversetting three. Or somehow get the binding order so that I can set him without three carrying, but that's really unlikely. We shall see, to be continued. So, anyway, Asa SCD cylinder, um, maybe fail out of the box, we'll see. Um, anyway, this is Alex, thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos, and please have fun, and keep it legal. Cheers.